What's up, everybody? You know, I was thinking, uh, like, <clears throat> you ever wonder why, like, there's so many churches in poor neighborhoods? It's because it's by design. Keep It's designed to keep people, it's the opium for the people. It keeps people high. It gives them a false sense of reality and take them away from, from the realities of every day. So it teaches black people, you know, to suffer now and wait till you die. And then when you die, you'll get your pie in the sky. That's what it teaches black people. It don't teach them to get their pie in the sky now. It teaches them to wait till they die, and then they'll get it. And like I was saying in my other video, all black churches, Baptist churches, Baptist congregations, put their money into all white banks. And it's not designed for the neighborhood to flourish. This is why the neighborhood looks so beat down. But the funny thing is, racism was created by white people. It wasn't created by black people. Black people always had a harder goal. White people created racism, not black people. And it became official in the 1600s when there was a, uh, a law called the Doctrine of Exclusion that stated no black person should enjoy the fruits of America's wealth unless he see the world through the eyes of a white man, or he creates wealth for a white man, or he saves a white man's life. That is the only way. Because at one time there were blacks that owned black slaves too. Not many, it was a few. But uh, what happened is one of the slaves had escaped off the plantation, off the black man's plantation. It was a white man that told him to leave. So when the slave left, the black man slew the white man for telling his slaves to leave. It's a long story, but um, yeah, racism was created, created by white people through the doctrine of exclusion. But the thing is, like people like Bill Cosby and Oprah Winfrey and Michael Jordan, you ever wonder why they don't go back to the hood where they're from his uh, resurrected neighborhood? It's because there were laws and public policies that said that they should never be able to help black people. You know, they, they're, law, they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're accountants, they're, their advisors teach them not to help their own people. That's what that, uh, that uh, white guy from, from, from the L.A. Clippers was saying. He wasn't saying that. He was saying that black people don't help each other. But he doesn't know that there were public policies that were implemented a long time ago that stopped black people from helping each other. And that's why these athletes, when they make a lot of money, they don't go back to the hood where they're from, especially Michael Jordan. See, and Bill Cosby always talk about how black people act, but he's talking about the symptoms. He doesn't talk about how the problems were created. And if Bill Cosby is so worried about the thing, if he's so worried about the way black people will act and behave and carry themselves in the street, their ghetto mentality, why don't he give, why don't he open up schools of etiquette that teach black people something different? You know, to teach them how to carry themselves in the public, teach them how to speak when they're in the public. It teaches them how to, how to, uh, you know, apply for jobs and stuff like that instead of talking about it. This is the ghetto, man. This is the bottom of the bottom. This is the bottom of the ocean, man. This is where the shrimp and the lobsters live, and the crabs. But he needs to open up schools and teach people how to do that. But he don't. But he'd rather sit around and talk about the problems and not the solutions. The solution is, for the most part, is that black neighborhoods need black businesses. They need black in the business, and that would, that would give it a sense of a community. Because black neighborhoods are not communities right now. They're like big hotels where black people go to sleep, and then wake up in the morning, and they leave. That's what it is. You know, it, you don't know that, the, the, like I said, the, the real estate is owned by the Jews. The real estate is owned by the Jews. The laundromat, the cleaners, the nail care products, and the nail care salon is owned by the Koreans. And the corner stores is owned by the Arabs or the Arabs. And they don't give a fuck about black people. They smile in your face and talk behind your back and try to fuck the little girls that come in there. And they do be fucking them little girls. You know, they take them downstairs and give them sandwiches and shit. And I don't even know why people eat out them fucking stores. They can't cook. But uh, that's what it is, man. But like I said, Bill Cosby talks about the problem. But he don't talk about the solution. The solution is to create businesses in the neighborhood that are going to generate wealth for black people. And that's what's wrong with black people. Black people don't own anything in America. And we try to make it seem like we arrived. We did not arrive. We have not come any further than we did back in the 1600s. Black people don't own shit. You know, you think about it. Who own the car? Who make the cars? Who own the car tires? Who own the traffic light? Who make the traffic lights? You know, black people don't own nothing. Black people don't own cable companies. 
We don't own radio stations. We don't own we don't own major buildings more than three stories high. You been out trying to see them skyscrapers? Them skyscrapers are owned by white people. Black people don't own shit in America. Nothing. Not even Jay Z and Puffy and all them guys with all their money. And they won't go back to the hood either, because they're taught to not go back to the hood. And these churches and preachers, most of them guys are sellouts too. That's why, you know, like Asians and white people, they got politicians that speak up for them. Who black people got that's gonna speak up for them? The preacher and the minister, they don't give a fuck about black people. They throw black people in front of the bus every day. All they care about is their big cars, their big churches, and big churches are for big egos filled with fascist conscious people. And that's all they care about. And them guys, they, and everybody makes money off the hood and leave with truckloads of money every day. Even the pastors. That's why you got so many churches in the hood, especially in Harlem and in Brooklyn. You can't walk four blocks without seeing a church, a church, a storefront church, a big church, or some kind of funeral home. And that's a good way to tell when you're in a bad neighborhood is when you see a lot of churches because it gives people a false sense of hope. It teaches them to sit on their hands and just wait for something to come to them instead of going out and get it. And that's why black people are fucked up because we don't know, we're not go-getters. We sitting and waiting for something to come to us and we don't like each other. And people keep talking about this Willie Lynch syndrome. It wasn't Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch was a slave baker, a breaker from Jamaica. And he heard about the meritorious manumission that uh, was a law that was placed in Virginia. And Willie Lynch heard about this, and he was a good slave breaker. So he went around the, the, went around the country. After he heard about the meritorious manumission, he went around the country and, and started implementing his program and added on to the meritorious manumission. And that's why he became well known as the Willie Lynch syndrome, where he taught black people, you put the tall against the short, the light skin against the dark, the male against the female, the fat against the skinny. There's always something that's going to drive, create a divide amongst black people. And like I said, you know, even today, you know, professional athletes suffer from the meritorious manual mission or the Willie Lynch syndrome, but they won't, don't want to go back and help because they feel like they're better and they have arrived. They basically died and went to heaven, black athletes. And that's why black people can't get ahead, you know. Once some guys make money, they don't go back to the hood. And everybody makes money off of black people. Black people make everybody rich in America. You make the Mexicans rich, and that's another thing. I'm gonna make a video about that, about all these uh, Mexicans coming into the country. I'm gonna make a video about that next. But black people make everybody rich. Everybody. We make everybody fucking rich, except for black people. Like I said before, what do black people, what do Chinese people buy from black people? Nothing. What do black people buy from Chinese people? Hair care products, nail care products. Chinese food, we got imitation soul food restaurants owned by Chinese people now. You know, we buy cars, we buy everything from Chinese people. They don't buy shit from black people. But what do black people buy from black people? Fucking uh, crack, weed, dope, heroin, pills, Xanax, Klinopin, lithium, uh, nutcrackers, weed. We buy all the shit that's gonna bring you down from each other. We don't buy shit from, and Chinese people don't buy shit from us. Everybody comes in the hood, take their money, and leave. And that's why the hood looks so fucked up. Even the preachers take their money and leave. They take their money and leave. Everybody makes money off of black people.